Hello everybody, Fear My Games, the new part of the guild, oh, not the guild wars, <laughs> of the DEI Samaria campaign. And today, we are here to smash Susia and add it to our growing empire. Once these fools are brought to their knees, we advance north and take out the barbarians who have for too long let to be free from our, from our might. They dare to break up a trade agreement with us early on. Now we will show them the error of their ways. Though they actually are uh, friends with us now, but they, they are trading again. But originally they had well back they had broken a trade agreement with us, okay? We, we remember these things. And we do not appreciate them, but the book of grudges must be settled some other time. Then <laughs> to take him on. As he was valiant, I honor him. But as he was ambitious, I slew him. William Shakespeare, English playwright, uh, 1564 AD to 1616 from Julius Caesar. <laughs> so this should be a pretty easy battle, but it's the first time we're facing their kind of army, so I really want to see how it looks on the battlefield. It does look like a lot of horses, so we'll need to be careful as this army has very little mobi mobility, so the enemies will quite significantly... Um, be able to outmaneuver us, especially in open fields such as this. However, their infantry are no match for mine. So, so long as we play to our strengths, uh, we should be a okay. Honestly, ideally, we might go through the woods here. However, I, but as we're the attacker, I don't think the enemy will actually come to us. So we must come to them. So we're going to definitely need to... Oh, this army still has a pi pike unit here. Let me adjust. <coughs> or line, sorry. Oh, sneeze. Don't worry, I'm not about to die. I think. <laughs> someone must just be talking about me, okay? That's that's just how these things work. Sneezing means someone talks about you, is talking about you behind your back, and they must be, be dealt with accordingly. Honestly, if this was a player, we might be a bit more concerned about what's going on. Best things stand. I'm going to have these slightly angled out on either flank. Because I am very much concerned about how the enemy cav are going to try and flank us. So I'm going to have like, my men, kind of like my flank slightly turned out. Even my own flaky troops are going to be slightly angled outwards. Just to try and... Kind of make it so it's a little bit harder for the enemy to hit us. I just realized this army doesn't actually have a baggage train. So, I, this army won't be able to advance actually all that far. And I'm going to use my cav as honestly more of a defensive force as well. And the reason why, of course, is that the enemy with their mob mobility advantage will... Need to do that. I think that's probably s more spam coming my way, but I'll double check just to be on the safe side as we advance. I see the enemy's also advancing. Yeah. I hate how long it takes sometimes for them to send that message. Yeah, look at these. But yeah, this army is honestly not one of my stronger ones. It's very much patchwork. It has militias, it has some basic guys. This army is definitely not an end game army. But hey, I think it shall do fine as they have long led the charge. In fact, in the early days in the Empire War, we could only afford armies of militia hoplites, but now we can field multiple armies of elite troops to dominate the land and take on our foes. As we must uh, do in order to combat the growing threat of the Romans to the west. Well, for now, they are friendly. There's no guarantees that they will remain friendly, as they may set their sights on our, what is rightfully ours, or maybe they may choose to attack our allies of Pergamon, in which case we will come to the defense of our allies. After all, the, king, the uh, kingdom of Samaria, still a kingdom right now, but empires is what we really are in reality. 
Um, we do not abandon our friends. Once we decided you're worth not murdering, we don't want other people murdering you. It, it, would, it would look bad for business, really. I mean, who would want to be friends with us if we don't actually help our friends? Think about it. Think about it. I just realized I kind of sent my entire infantry forward, but I completely forgot to bring up my cav army, too. The enemy looks like they're about to start engaging us. I'm like surprised that these guys are actually right first. I guess they're lighter than my hoplites are. Let me bring up my cav. Thankfully, they attacked a hoplite unit in head on instead of one of my other weaker, one of my other weaker units who are more susceptible to a cav charge. I'm gonna start moving up my troops here. I'm gonna get my general in position to where I want it to be. I'm gonna start moving these guys around now onto the flanks. Especially as it looks like the enemy is currently engaged. Around this flank here. I want my... Oh no. No, I don't want you. Oh, these guys are on melee mode. That, why would they be on melee mode? That's kind of weird. No, you're not supposed to be on melee mode either. Why would you do that? Your missile troops ready for battle. Not melee boys ready for battle. Right, I'm gonna start investing my cav now into the fight. I'm gonna pull these guys out of pull these guys out of this fight right now. Ready and eager. Yeah, there we go. We're using our archers to take down their archers. Looks like us playing it safe wasn't too bad for us. I'm gonna advance these guys forward now while I take to the field. I think the enemy's about to send in their general against me, so I'm going to counter charge them and then send in my Threo spearmen to assist in this battle. Alright, looks like the enemy has broken. Victory is ours, and Susi is now ours. We only lost 154 men. It does look like taking out this garrison will be easier than I thought. So hopefully that means that we should be good to go to take Susi. We haven't encountered Sakuraka's may any of their armies yet. We've, we've seen one, but we haven't actually faced them in battle. That'll be the real test to see how difficult this war is going to be. Quite honestly, in a lot of total wars, you kind of eventually hit a uh, a point in the campaign where the you kind of start rolling over a lot of enemy armies. The reason why is the AI is not always the best at making an army, a proper army. Um, so once you start getting your elite armies out, that a lot of difficulty does start going out the window. However, I am hoping with Divided and Para that that does not happen and we can keep going and keep having fun with it. Hopefully it's not just going to be all these garrison armies. Because for example, when I fought the Seleucids, they had lots of armies. They threw them at us. It might be if Sakuraka's on a major army, this might be a bit of an easier war than, let's say, I actually had attacked Bactria. Or, or if I had attacked Rome or Egypt. Honestly, the a war against Egypt is one that I'm actually looking forward to the most, if I'm being honest. Because being able to take out Egypt, be taken on Egypt, would be pretty interesting battle. It makes me, make basically make allow me to control a large, like a very large amount of territory, and would definitely put me into trajectory to take on Rome. It'd be kind of interesting to see how the AI would kind of react to it. We like Pergamon is you know relatively small power over here. I'm gonna end turn. Actually, I'm just going to turn. It's really a totally small power in Asia Minor. It's not too big, not too grand, uh, comparatively speaking. But with me as its ally, I wonder if that makes it so that the enemy armies are less likely to attack Pergamon as well. If that's the case.
It'd be quite interesting to see. I think that is an army of Sokka Raka right there. I don't think they're going to come in to attack us in Susia, but who knows? The AI may choose to be bold. If they do, I'll be a little bit surprised, but pleasantly surprised, I would say. Pleasantly. But, uh... I, I, I won't, like, uh... Hmm, we'll see. I don't know how big Sakuraka is. I, I feel like they look bigger than they probably are. And there's the armies of Pergamon moving through my territories trying to, uh, like, assist me in the war. That's one reason why when I called my list, I'm like, eh, I actually kind of regret doing this. Because, you know, if the Pergamese armies kind of get involved in the arm war and they start taking territory from me, I'll start getting annoyed at them and we'll have problems. That's one reason why I'm like, we need to get a war machine out there now, because Pergamon's war machine is not that far behind. <laughs> we need to keep up the, the the fight. It does look like Sakuraka might have just sent an army towards us. And I think the Scythians just attacked Pergamon there. The Hagar, though, we have to keep an eye out, because they are real. I didn't even realize how close they were to Tarax until last episode. So that's one reason why we definitely need to keep a very close eye on that situation. Asgarta is alive and well, which is good for me. I forgot if we actually got a military access from Harmozia. I want to make sure to double check just to make sure before I try and take on that army of Sakuraka. Rebellion imminent in Mesopotamia. How rude from these peasants. How dare they. Apparently, we just have too many squalor buildings, which honestly kind of does make sense. Um, you know, we have a lot of food producing places and things that make squalor. And uh, not a lot of places that counter really counteract it. That hasn't really been, like, uh, been my mainly my primary um, concern, though it probably should be more of my concern than it has been. Yeah, this army's gonna take a few turns away, so I won't be ready to put down any rebellions. But yeah, it looks like... No, that's not a rebellion. I thought it was a rebellion from over there, but it's actually just a, a, another a friendly army. Yeah, this army looks like it probably lost a fight, so it's, that's why it's probably not gonna come try and pick a fight with us over here in Susia. Military Lodge. I think I decided to make this one a military hub. I could be wrong. I don't remember. Honestly, you probably shouldn't, all things considered. So I'm actually going to demolish this building, yes. I'm going to just demolish it. I'm going to, I'm going to rebuild this area into a more of a nice production area region. So I don't really, I don't need the extra, I don't need the, I, I, I mean, I don't need the extra, const like, army construction in the area. Unhappy Pulse and not, uh... Definitely not the best when it comes to keeping people happy. I need to do more bread and circus stuff, I guess, but I don't really want to sometimes. Well, the Pontiac nobility is already back up to 26% after I purge them. That's honestly quite impressive. This leader of theirs has a lot of gravitas. Which is probably what's caught giving him such a boost. So I'm going to try and boost our, us a little bit by raising him slightly. Okay. So we have oh, this army moving into the east. This one is also moving in as well. I might send this one to Nissa and then this one... To, yeah, this one is a little bit further behind, so I'm going to send this one instead to Marv. Marav, or maybe I'll send them actually northwards around this site, and then this army will hopefully recover in a couple. And actually, it's already recovered. I can't just go into Ardia because I'm not friendly or at war with these guys, so I don't, but I don't want to just go to war with them, especially because they are allied to Bactria. I'm not too big of a fan of another war, however, I'm willing to offer them a trade agreement or non aggression. In fact, if they're willing, it does not appear that they are doing so. It looks like they're already importing a lot of stuff, most likely. From other, from, no, well, actually, most likely from Bactria. That's at least my guess. Well, I'd love to just move this army on immediately and attack Marv. 
the enemy is quite likely to uh, try and do something about it. I want to double check. Harmos Asgarta, do we have a... Do we have military access with you? Yes, we do. We have military access with them. Yes. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to send in our army then into their land, and we're going to try and take out the Storm of the Steps with the Ares Dread. If we could wipe them out, I'm hoping it will remove any threat from the southeast and maybe even relieve pressure from our allies. Bactria definitely is looking like they're going to put take Pura for themselves, which means this this ar this ally over here is rather short-lived. They did get us into a war, but I think we should be pretty it should be pretty easy to take them out. I think I am going to just conquer Prada when if I do take them out because Bactria is likely going to be another enemy. They're not going to be a major threat, I would say, just because they don't seem to be all that... They have, don't seem to have grown very much. They seem to only have, like, two or three settlements, from what I can tell. So something of that size is not a major concern. Uh, I wanted... Ooh, this one because it reduces banditry. It will negatively affect public order, but I think the banditry is a bit more of a pro media problem. And I want to puzzle, so I want to make a granary grain pit, but I don't have the money to do so this turn. Here's I want a grain pit, is because it'll help reduce banditry as well as provide me some nice amount of food. So it's a bit of a two for one deal right there. I do have this agent here. I forgot what she does. What do you do again? Let's do that then. Where's the other one? Right here. Hopefully she might help uh, eventually reduce, make so Mesopotamia is not such a rebellious province in the future. I think we're just going to have to end turn, because I'm not willing to move out right now into Susia, and I'm not sure if I want the Arctikoana to be a war with me right now. Ah, screw it. I don't care about them. Let's just wipe these guys off the face of the earth. They wish war upon me. I'm just going to resolve this one, because it should be a pretty easy battle. Just a lot of archers and things like that. Let's save slave the captives. This means that now I no longer have to worry about this army popping up in my battle. Well, it did probably, you know, annoy these guys. They didn't like me anyways, so it's like, fuck you. <laughs> you know. Alright. Well, it does look like that I did get enough well, just enough well to actually get that grain, uh, grain pits built up. It's going to actually be less food than what I got, but I am building it mostly for the banditry and less for any other reason, if I'm being honest. I mostly should demolish this one and build something better in its place. Especially because it doesn't provide any bonuses necessarily. Outside of the nice garrison, but I don't think I necessarily need it right now. But it does look like they're, they do expand northward, so... Maybe Sakuraka is a bigger, arm, a bigger faction than I gave credit for, but definitely... I think... They must have been worn down by some kind of wars or something, because the fact that I've only seen two, one army that seems to be full stack, and the other one was wounded, definitely not in the uh, best position right now. Roma. I, I honestly, it's moments like these where I kind of wish I could just see the map of the West. Just because I'm honestly, one of the things I love about playing Total War games is I'm always super curious to see how, how the AI, AI are doing against each other in battles. So I'm like, ooh, are you winning? How's it going? You know? For example, in Rome, Total War, Rome 1 Total War is super simple to kind of tell who's winning. Because you just ask them for map information and they'll give it to you and you can see kind of how the army is changing. You see sometimes Britan uh, Britannia is winning in the north, sometimes it's Germania. I don't, I think, I don't really remember really any situation where Gaul was conquering everything. I think it was usually 
the Britannians or the Germanians were conquering the north. Uh, Romans, Romans, like, would do some conquering, but they weren't at... They weren't just, I don't remember them being super efficient in my games, mostly because I usually, when I played my games and they went a long time, I usually tried focusing Rome. I had one situation where I was playing as Grace. I felt pretty confident. I was doing pretty dang good, I thought. And then, um, but I wasn't ready. But, when, but Rome suddenly declared war and Woodward had to declare war on me. And I'm like, okay, I think I can handle this. But then they attacked Thessalonica, one of my strongest outposts. And they basically, I, like with, with the fur, with this slowly dwindling army, I was fighting, facing off army and army and army of Rome with no time to really recover. And so what would happen is that so eventually I lost this Lonica. But I was like, God damn, these Romans are so strong. And uh, eventually I, I only had three settlements left by the end of it, by the time I gave up on that campaign. I probably could have, like, it was uh, Syracuse. I think Canossos Bactria is now declaring war on me. All of my allies have joined me in this war. I'm not too surprised that they decided to do this. I mean, I'm tempted to take the battle here, but I think I'm gonna fall back and see if I can make it to my the settlement. Use them as some, well, that's not what I wanted to do, but okay. Hey, I get some reinforcements of the garrison. I'm gonna quick save this just to make sure that it doesn't crash. And we're going to fight this battle. We're going to show these guys why I dare to go into their territory. They only have Eastern Spearmen and Eastern Militia. This is not a very impressive army from these guys. And now, it does appear that Bactria is now war with me, which means I get to save my allies uh, from essentially being wiped out the face of the earth by Bactria now. Oh, but it does mean that I need to get those armies moving faster than I was planning on it. A people's voice is dangerous. Alright, let's see. Since they attacked me, we can just play the defensive game. So, they had, they didn't really actually have any cap, a big cap advantage on me. So I'm actually going to just stick out in the middle of this field right here. I don't really need to worry too much about anything else there. I'm going to, militia. Since I'm a little bit worried about these guys holding a, f I'm like I want to, I'm gonna put these guys actually in the center on either side of my my pike unit. Because honestly, I think it's actually the safest spot for them. And I'm going to use these guys as the flanks because they actually will make sure that my flank doesn't get churned at all. And I'm quite happy to make sure that doesn't happen. So, so I'm gonna make sure you guys all have gar mode on. And then you guys, my archers, will be behind them, ready to fire. Infantry! Infantry. And then I want my axemen ready to go. They do a really good job at doing the flanks. That's one reason why I'm having these guys here. They're kind of a pseudo front line that I can call up that, that I can make use of. They're not too strong. But they can, but they get the job done, I'd say. I'm probably gonna have these guys over here. I have my general be over here on his own. He's a pretty tough guy. I think he can handle it. See, so yeah, I'm gonna put these guys in, in a control group together real fast. I'm also going to make sure these guys are in guard mode too because I don't want them to get too big for their britches. Uh, why are you guys being so weird about this? There we go. Honestly, I'm at slight dip, so I'm actually going to move up somewhat. What? This control group should be locked. Why is the front line looking so weird? The reason I'm moving forward slightly is I think I'm I feel like I'm in a bit of a slight dip and I want to get out of that set out of said dip. Oh, 
Everything else is basically just mob units. So I'm just going to advance them behind here. My, they're not really going to be able to impact the fight at all, but... Yeah, it feels like everybody except for my these militia oplites actually prop kept their proper place in line. That's kind of weird. So it's an easy fix to get them ready and rare to go for battle. So the enemy does have war elephants, but they're but they're not armored elephants. It looks like they're just standard elephants. Well, they're war elephants. They are char about to charge a pike and spear line head on. I question their. Why do my archers always. Why are you guys so aggro? You don't need to have melee mode. Can you guys do me a quick favor though and focus fire that elephant unit? I want it dead. And I want it dead now. I want it dead yesterday. See, I'm going to get these guys like at the edge of their cover. And I'm gonna spring them on the enemy if I if they actually are able to make do make do with anything. I'm trying to focus them down with my archers now because that should they should go down to a bunch of air fire, but it'll take a little bit of time. Yeah, now they're starting to feel the effects that they're they're dropping like flies now. Especially now that they're engaged against a hoplite unit, which has bonuses. I think against elephants. Yeah, bonuses against elephants as well. Yep, there we go. Slaughtered the, those little war elephants, showing them they're not all hot shit, suckers. Apparently, the enemy is thinking that they're the defenders. Well, I don't mind if they want to throw away their cav against my spear wall. I mean, they're more than welcome to do so. I'm not going to begrudge them a mistake. Their spearmen are doing just fine where they are. I'm assuming once this this wave of enemy calves starts dying off, they will probably. Um... Oh, those are pretty cool looking curved blades. Make me makes me think of sickles, but I know sickles don't look like. I will. These sickles I've seen don't usually look like that. The enemy general is dead. Come on, AI, you are smarter than this. You charged my pike line with your all of your cavalry. What did you think was going to happen? That you just punched through strong, braced hoplite walls? You were mistaken if that's what you thought. Well, as things stand, they seem quite determined to try and just folk, uh, try and use archer fire against me. But don't worry, I can deal with you without any issues. All I need to do is order my guys to focus fire you down and then you won't have any more archers that's simple as that bucko especially because these ends aren't armored at all so focusing them down will be pretty simple and yeah, just eastern arches it does look like that this is causing the enemy to start moving maybe they'll actually attack me I mean technically no matter how this goes they are losing this battle. Because they attack me. If the timer runs out, then it's my favor. If the timer doesn't run out, then it's their... Then, yeah. It's my favor, most likely. Unless the AI magically gets more intelligence, they're not going to win. Because my guys are better armored than them, so them just peppering me with arrows is not going to do too much. And they're honestly mostly... Hitting my weaker troops, my Thracian footmen, with arrow fire. They're not my brunt. Of, they're not my brunt. The brunt of my front line or my power. Not, so long as they don't hit my axemen, which are my big AP damage dealers, they're good. These guys are mostly here to, to be to kind of take some damage, de de hopefully dish some damage back. Yeah, there we go. That forced the enemy to. Uh, that forced the enemy to charge me. Now that they don't have much, if any. Uh, archer units left. They kind of are forced to engage me in melee. Swords. 
Once thing the guys start getting locked in, I'm gonna charge in my Thracian footmen. The enemy on this flank got up there a little bit faster, so I'm going to be engaging that side a little bit faster as well. Here's why I'm engaging these guys now is I want to make sure these guys don't get my uh, my precious and uh, my precious uh, units don't get bomb side by the enemy. All right, in time to just grab. Oops, I accidentally clicked off screen. There we go. Just charge in their flank, buckos. I'm gonna set invest on this flank. Send in my general around here. You are welcome to go this way. While this one deals with the archers. Now that they're all engaged upon my nice thick front line, they are now just going to be held fast, dealt with, I think without too much difficulty now, especially considering now I have my cav able to go directly into their behinds. And showing them what's what. You know, good old fashioned hammer and anvil strategies. It's a good thing that my cav won't kill themselves on my spears. Looks like I do, my Thracian warriors over here are actually. No, wait, who are these people? You know, my Thracian footmen are actually starting to break a little bit, but. They're doing what they need to do. Perfect. Where is my general actually? I forgot I forgot I forgot where I put him. Yeah, the garrison units actually made it in time to get involved in the fight, which is kinda of funny to me. Let's see. The enemy is starting to all break now, I think, due to army losses. We will, I'll just order my cav to now just start, start cleaning up the enemy. With love to them, at least. Yeah, I want to make sure this army is not going to be in a position to immediately come back to attack me. So I'm going to order you guys to just chase them down, keep up the chase. Looks like my archers actually ended up walking into melee a little bit there. Oops. I guess this this is apparently the only archer that wasn't on guard mode. That's that's probably why his target was running away. And he's like, oh, I'm going to check, go into melee trying to get after that guy because I am not the brightest tool in the shed. It does look like that's about all I'm gonna really get. Oh wait, no, no, no. There's more people to murder over here, guys, guys, guys. Team, team, team. Murders him. If we murder them, we don't have to worry about them anymore. I think this cav unit will catch up to it. They're heavy cav, but they're very heavy cav, but they still are faster than uh, spearmen on foot. So yeah, but as you can see, they're starting to catch up, running them down like the dogs they are. Almost gone. What is now this message? Strange. I'm not expecting any messages, so I'm just gonna check it real fast while I chase that guy down. Oh, yeah. No, so that makes sense. I was just getting a message from my phone carrier saying that there's been outages in my area, or at least something has had outages in my area. I just got a text message about it. Easy victory. The only one that really suffered some wounds are probably my Thracian footmen. But hey, happens sometimes. The elephants and the cavalry basically got did no damage. The primary threat that they had was the archers, and funny enough, the eastern spearmen. I guess probably because the eastern spearmen just use sheer weight of numbers, I guess, to get some kills. Or probably because they're more on the center on the flanks, I guess, while they're eastern spear the eastern militia. I mean, where I had my Thracian footmen. 
Well, they're probably there. Eastern spearmen were probably more in my center, where my hoplites were kind of just holding the ground firmly. Say not always what you know, but always what you say, know what you say. Claudius, Roman Emperor, 10 BC to 54 AD. Another thing I always find interesting when it's like, when you think about the Roman Empire, is that technically the Roman Empire lasted, unless in, like, if you count the Republic in, Republic area, it'll be, it's even longer. Let's say when it just, when it, like, became an, you know, an empire, quote-unquote, in, like, in the, you know, the first century, it lasted for 1,000, about 1,500 years in one form or another, which I think is just extremely impressive. War slaves for the mines. And now my this little escapade of the Ares Dread is not going to go get involved with attacking Bactria. Character personality change. Once he shied away from battle, but now this man has learned to steel himself against the oncoming tides of war. His character has been hardened and shown true by the rigors of war. He has turned his love of knowledge and virtue into a strong personality trait. So I guess it's this general here. Yeah. I don't really have any good replacements if I lose good troops. On the bright side, I'm going to use this guy now to kind of wipe the floor a little bit with the remains of his army. By wiping the floor with them, I can then not have to worry about an enemy army for quite a while. Maybe not quite a while, but at least uh, we'll kill these guys. We'll be nice to them. We won't enslave them. We'll just murder them. That way, you they get go to the afterlife. Boom. All right, Susia. I need. I'm gonna do the Silk Road. I'm also going to try and get a local log. I do want some agriculture, but I also want to make sure. I'm gonna put a consecrated ground here to build up some public order. I think. Uh, I don't want outskirts of subterranean aqueducts. Sure, might as well. Make it look pretty beautiful. Actually, wait, I already have a temple. I don't need that. I'm going to build a... Time to do nomadic in uh, in here. What's a, What can I get from the local Agora? I do like this, because I do do a lot of trade, but... Ah, screw it. Let's, let's make it a Gora. Why not? Uh, you for Nyssa. You for Kaith. This army will need to take a couple turns to replenish now. This guy to scout what's over here. I don't see an enemy army here, so I honestly probably could waltz, waltz over and wipe it out without too much difficulty. There is a, an army here, but it looks pretty weak, actually. And so is this one. I'm gonna get a little bit closer. So, yeah, it's not looking like it's actually a big scare. Wait, did Bactria not join in this war against me? Bactria, I, in fact, did not join the war against me. That makes my life a lot easier, actually. All right, we've driven them out. We've driven them away from our allies. Looks like this is actually a pretty weakened army. It's probably going to be the same situation over here. Let's see, what is... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to double-check the positions of all my armies. The Odyssey... Uh, these guys are the ones who watch the north for me. You guys are, you know, kind of pushing people away from our ally. But honestly, I'm going to now, now that I know how weak that army is, I'm just going to start advancing it northwards at this point. That guy is almost in position. That one's almost in position as well. These guys are going to need a moment to recover. To rest and recover. The Roma, the Roma doppelgangers are still two turns away from being ready to go to war. And even if they were ready to go to war right now, they're all the way in Syria. And they're not going to be able to get it, make any impact in this war. What's... Well, they probably will be able to make an impact on this war. But... You're not going to be able to fish about it. So I'm, I'm going to build a... Um, I want to make sure people are happy. I want to build a local Agora. Can either one of you help me? This one will reduce banditry. 
also make it so it's slightly stronger in case Pokemon does betray me. It is my western border, one of my western border towns. It's a weak point. Screw it, let's build an Agora. Make it so the garrison's a little bit stronger there. I, that'd be kind of nice. Building this in tracks will hopefully help with the public order problems that we're having. There is a rebellion here, which I can honestly make use of this rebellion, assuming to uh, to basically be the first thing that the Roma doppelgangers slaughter. And I do mean slaughter. Let's build. I definitely want that built up as fast as possible. I'm gonna build up the Persian settlements. See, once you're here, I'm, I want to actually kind of see when it gets here what I can start recruiting out of this thing. Because I know I can recruit stuff. No, actually, apparently not. I guess it just provides garrison. Never mind. Oh, well, that was a misunderstanding on my part. But it does look like Bactria has decided that I'm a bit too scary for them to try and take war. No matter how friendly they are with these guys. So, uh, they're left to their own devices. So, we're going to end turn here. What time is it? We're 41 minutes in. I think what I'm going to do is we're going to do this last and then we're going to do this last turn. That's going to be the end of the episode. Honestly, I love looking at my armies. I love seeing how many stars the God of War has, the Daemons of Polymus, even the Brave Company is getting some nice stars in. Our new armies, our new lead armies, they have no traditions to build off of. They are just new, shiny. They maybe have some mighty armor expensive weapons but they have not been forged in the fires of war like our other armies one thing i may start may do after this war if there's a brief lull of peace potentially before i might attack scythia i plan on i plan on may probably need to i'll probably renovate a little bit our armies make sure they're all a bit more up to snuff because when Rome comes, I imagine it will be a major war. I wonder how Egypt is looking. I, I wish, honestly, one thing I love about Warhammer is that, that you're going to get the power ranking system. So I can kind of tell how powerful I am in relation to everybody else. And at this point, you kind of have to guess. I think it would be pretty cool to see it, though, personally. But as things stand... Uh, but I think stand. I, Egypt is pro is probably smaller than me, unless they've been really expanding to the west, because they only have Egypt itself and a little bit of Asia Minor and the island of Cyp of Cyprus. And unless they might have actually been expanding into uh, into the uh, into what you mentioned, you peninsula. I forget the name escapes me. <laughs> the Arabian Peninsula. There we go. That's what's called. Uh, I carry on. Natural causes of the Spartan dynasty. New political appointment. We do, man, there's a, a few rebellions in a minute, I will be honest about. Let's see, what is the situation of loyalty? Loyalty's not too bad. These guys hate barbarians, but I think, honestly, I'm at war with enough barbarians that I think that's why their loyalty is going up. Because I had some new wars break out, and I think they, the enemies might be classified as barbarians. I mean, they're not Greek, so they're probably barbarians. I mean, that's I think that's how they thought back in the day. But you are one turn away. I honestly really do like the look of this army, of these zombies here. Too bad I can't rename these things and call them, like, co first court, second court, third, you know what, you know, kind of like, uh, that'd be kind of fun. Hey, we should be able to wipe these out of the floor, though. These guys are actually being kind of helpful. and they're, These guys are weak. They have been useful at wiping out um, rebellions for me. Alright, so you... Boots suffer attrition, apparently, going that route. So, I'd rather not have my army suffer attrition, especially when I'm trying to throw it into an army. But yeah, nothing too impressive that I can recruit here, but that's fine. I really wanted to. I think I might have actually been planning on making this into a, a livestock region. So I might just do that. 
All right, so I'm going to get Benissa besieged. This one looks like it's a might be a slightly bigger garrison on me, but I'm gonna take it out because I want to make sure I can reduce re minimize the sheer the amount of damage that the enemies will do to me. So that way I can keep up the war machine without it being put in put down. Because all resolve does usually cause more wounds than if I played it myself. Let's see if I leave this stance, how many turns will it take? It looks like it still says one turn. So I'm gonna wait kind of like by the border here. So that way next turn, let's see if I go fortified stance. Still says two turns. I'm gonna fortify stance right here, and that way next turn I could just come in here, wipe these guys out, hopefully, and then push north again. Amul might be my next target to just kind of like delete. So if I could, and then by deleting them, hopefully I will be able to reunite that province. And I don't think they really have any big allies on their side. I think Bactria is probably considered now a not so trustworthy faction because they did renege on a D on a their deal with their allies. Yeah, they're, they're they still are apparently are slightly reliable, but they probably might have been a bit better. I'm steadfast though. Man, we might end up going to war with Bactria. We'll see. We meet, we're not immediately going to do it though. So, no, oh, that army is dead. Wow. Alright, so guys, we're going to pick up the next episode. We're going to start off by taking out Nyssa. Uh, our, this almighty army over here is going to go north, take out Kath. And hopefully once Nyssa's taken, it should only take a turn before the centaurs are able to take out Marv. And then with that, we'll hopefully stay one step ahead of our allies of Pergamon. But if we end up falling behind for whatever reason, Pergamon will come in, pick up the slack. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of that idea, but you know. Nothing I can really do about it. No. Yep. Honestly, I might just offer to go to war against Bactria once I clear up this big mess. Mostly so that way, that way I, I can be like, yeah, I'm cool, you know, I'm helping you, allies. <laughs> well, anyways, if you guys like the video, press the like button down below. Subscribe to see more of my content. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.